very good morning uh, everyone this is uh, dr s c mohan krishna an associate professor in the department of mechanical engineering vidyavardhaka college of engineering mysore karnataka i am uh, very happy that i will be making the presentation on uh, internal combustion engines and uh, refrigeration and air conditioning which is uh, one of the main topics in the course elements of mechanical engineering before i start i profusely thank vtu e shikshana for uh, giving me an opportunity in uh, presenting the information dear friends you all know that in uh, elements of mechanical engineering there are a variety of topics wherein we can uh, get to know the application aspects of mechanical engineering that is why the course uh, elements of mechanical engineering has been structured as said in the beginning one of the main topics what i am concentrating is internal combustion engines and the next sub module in the same module refrigeration and air condition you all know that this topic seems to be esoteric in mechanical engineering as it requires deeper comprehension of the fundamental concepts without having uh, the detailed idea regarding the theoretical uh, concepts and description it may not be possible to look into the analytical detail but in uh, elements of mechanical engineering we need to concentrate more on theoretical description in the first stretch let me take up internal combustion engines then it shall be followed by refrigeration and air conditioning before we start the exact topic one should be clearly aware of the course learning objectives in every session that has to be strongly accentuated understand the concepts of boilers turbines pumps internal combustion engines and refrigeration in elements of mechanical engineering we focus on prime movers namely internal combustion engines turbines and yet another area pertaining to heating ventilation air conditioning and refrigeration that is mainly we focus on refrigeration and air conditioning now it is the high time to start internal combustion engines i'll be running through the ppt one can clearly see to the information followed by theoretical description before we get the exact meaning of internal combustion engine first we should be aware of what exactly an engine is an engine is basically a prime mover it is a self actuating device wherein one form of energy shall be converted into another form which particular form is converted into which form that shall be the question what we need to answer normally an engine is a device that converts chemical or heat energy into useful form of mechanical energy that is the prime objective of an engine when we look to the word engineer we find an engine what exactly the meaning an engineer has the potential to work like an engine so that is the beauty of the word engineer 
on the knowing the exact meaning of engine we come across the types of engine namely internal combustion engine and external combustion engine no doubt in order to achieve the energy conversion process that is chemical or heat energy is converted into mechanical energy unquestionably combustion phenomenon should take place so when we peep to the types of engine naturally we will come across internal combustion engine and external combustion engine what exactly the meaning of that when we see to this power point presentation slide we can see to the animation in the case of internal combustion engine naturally the phenomenon of combustion takes place inside the engine cylinder whereas in the case of external combustion engine the phenomenon of combustion takes place outside the engine cylinder in the coming slides we will get to know more on the technical depth of internal combustion engines but before we know the exactness of internal combustion engine also the uniqueness for about a few minutes we shall know the historical perspective without having the historical background there is no point in learning any topic or a course let me brief about it as everyone is aware of the information the first ever steam engine was invented by sir james watt on the invention of steam engine phenomenal growth happened in engine technology many propounders have been responsible in the significant growth or development of engines to name a few in 1769 nicholas augustus cagnot he was responsible in initiating a form of petrol engine but it was a crude one later on some of the pioneers engineers namely john barber samuel brown nicholas augustus otto and many others have been responsible in the development in addition to these dougal clark jean joseph i think lenoyer and many others have been responsible in making improvisation so undoubtedly nearly 20 to 25 pioneers engineers have been responsible in the significant development of engines that is why engine technology has been very popular nowadays phenomenal growth or happenings are taking place in engine technology now coming back to the subject i was telling about the idea pertaining to internal and external combustion engines it is very much clear the phenomenon of combustion will be undoubtedly responsible for converting one form of energy into another mainly we focus on the generation of mechanical energy next when we need to know the classification of internal combustion engines in detail definitely this slide will be helpful in knowing the information to begin with what exactly the fundamental classification of internal combustion engines the first one is it is the type of fuel used before we know the theoretical description of a variety of engines 
it is the time to know the classification of internal combustion engines the first one as discuss the type of fuel used petrol engines diesel engines gas engines and biofuel engines normally we have been habituated to the names petrol and diesel engines but along with that we have gas and biofuel engine nowadays use of biofuels have been a bright prospect for researchers many researchers have taken work on biofuels so using biofuels unquestionably that can be regarded as one among the classification next the method of ignition the first category is spark ignition engine the second one compression ignition engine spark ignition engine mainly focuses on the principle of operation of petrol engine since in a petrol engine we make use of spark plug it is clearly referred to as spark ignition engine next comes compression ignition engine which helps in knowing the mechanism of four stroke diesel engine next coming to the third classification number of strokes per cycle you all know that we have conventionally two stroke and four stroke engines from a time immemorial we have been used to this classification in the present technology in the engine technology we will even come across six stroke engine but still it is in the embryonic phase we normally take up the number of strokes per cycle to be 2 and 4 next the fourth classification according to the cycle of combustion as revealed in the beginning of the lecture no doubt we normally depend on phenomenon of combustion once after the phenomenon of combustion is terminated no doubt the temperature and pressure of gases liberated we normally focus so it can be petrol engine diesel engine or any other type of engine but fundamentally in the cycle of combustion we find auto cycle engine diesel cycle engine and dual combustion engine auto cycle it is for petrol engine diesel cycle engine clearly emphasizes one can peep to the mechanism of diesel engine next is dual combustion engine which is the amalgamation of or the combination of petrol and diesel cycles next according to the number of cylinders used one is the single cylinder engine the other one multi cylinder engine next coming to the sixth classification of ic engines this uh, slide will help us to know a variety of arrangement of cylinders in the previous slide i clearly emphasized that single and multi cylinder engines have been used but here one can get to know a variety of arrangements of cylinders what are that vertical engine horizontal engine inline engine radial engine and v engine in a course uh, automotive engineering one will be highly privileged to know the detailed information pertaining to arrangement of cylinders next coming to the seventh classification according to the method of cooling the first one is air cooled engine the second one liquid cooled engine next the eighth classification according to their uses the first one is stationary engine second one automobile engine to add upon that we find 
marine engine and aircraft engine so in these slides we can get to know a variety of ic engines used one based on the type of fuel used method of ignition number of strokes executed per cycle according to the cycle of combustion next number of cylinders then the arrangement of cylinders then ultimately method of cooling eventually according to their uses next directly when we start describing the principle of operation of an engine or the mechanism of an engine there is no point in having clarity to know about that we should be aware of the engine parts what are all the various components used in a particular engine this particular side clearly mentions the schematic of engine parts we should be well acclimatized with the various parts of an engine in this we find the schematic at the top we find spring next uh, mechanically operated valves namely inlet and exhaust valves then comes uh, engine cylinder so engine cylinder is very prominent earlier we could peep to the arrangement classification of cylinders so engine cylinder is very important next uh, we can uh, see to piston so piston is a moving part a reciprocating part which has the potential to achieve the action of reciprocation to the piston connecting rod has been aligned next flywheel crank case crank cam camshaft these are all the important prominent components in knowing the exact nomenclature of engines let me briefly take up the functionality of each and every component so that when we learn the principle of operation of engines in future definitely it will have very good connectivity in having deeper insight or focus no doubt in this schematic at the top you find springs the action of springs will be very vital in generating energy so or to support mechanically operated valves sometimes during the mechanism of either four stroke engine whether it can be petrol or diesel initially the inlet valve will be kept closed then the exhaust valve will be open but on termination inlet valve shall be kept closed and the exhaust valve will be functioning depending on the number of strokes we will be in a position to know how exactly mechanically operated valves will function next uh, engine cylinder so this is the enclosure no doubt without uh, accompanying an engine cylinder it will not be possible to know the exactness of the mechanism of any engine next piston piston is invariably the heart depending on the reciprocation of the piston the conversion of energy takes place as i said in the beginning of my video lecture mechanical energy has to be generated but what should be the source chemical or heat energy will be metamorphosed into mechanical energy undoubtedly piston and connecting rod will have the potential in energy generation depending on the reciprocation of piston connecting rod functions so connecting rod unquestionably has the ability to generate mechanical energy the other components that will be supportive for this action are crank crank case crank shaft 
so these components have been highly supportive in completely actuating the mechanism in the schematic we even find flywheel flywheel no doubt it will be somehow bulky it has the tendency to store energy because of the continuous action of any type of engine no doubt torque fluctuations will be developed in order to minimize torque and to store energy flywheel will be used sometimes the flywheel may be bulky or light depending on the requirement so when we get to know the idea about the various parts of an engine their functional features and other detail the mechanism of the four stroke engine and two stroke engine could be comprehended with these this is yet another schematic wherein we can know the uniqueness of engine nomenclature earlier i could give the information regarding the parts or components in an engine here in the three dimensional view we can get to know the idea where exactly those parts have been incorporated initially this idea will help any individual to know the mechanism of either four stroke or two stroke engine with very very convincing way next on knowing the parts of an ic engine we should be aware of ic engine terminology the front view of this will give the idea about the various parts and their positioning where exactly the parts earlier discussed have been positioned and undoubtedly the mechanically operated valves are important you can see clearly in the schematic or in the diagram so at the top we find manifold so inlet manifold and exhaust we can see cylinder head is very important the components which have been incorporated inside the engine cylinder or piston to the piston no doubt connecting rod is aligned next we find something called gudgeon pin gudgeon pin is very prominent next in the schematic on knowing these functional features we come across two very important terms namely top dead center and bottom dead center we are very much aware that there will be reciprocation of piston from top end to bottom end there arises two terms when we use the term engine cylinder we normally come across engine diameter professionally it is the bore bore or diameter is very important that is one of the major specifications of an engine along with engine bore we normally consider yet another term stroke it is the displacement of piston or very technical it is called stroke what exactly that stroke the movement of the piston from top dead center to bottom dead center and vice versa depending on that we can clearly assess that one complete stroke has been executed we can find yet another schematic representation wherein we get the idea about stroke bore and volume when i take up the theoretical description of engine we can exactly understand the thermodynamics part of it without having the knowledge of thermodynamics the fundamental or elementary knowledge of thermodynamics we will not be in a position to understand the technical depth of 
internal combustion engines next what are all the things till now we have learned let me summarize initially we could concentrate on the introductory aspect once again let me highlight so that there will be crystal clear clarity in knowing the information regarding engines directly going to the depth of internal combustion engines will not help any individual we should be aware of the introduction the prelude to the course or the topic ic engines we should be clearly aware of the definition what exactly an engine is as said in the beginning that is a prime mover or a self actuating device which has the potentiality to convert one form of energy into another what form into what form the question will be raised the chemical or the heat energy shall be converted into mechanical energy on knowing the definition of engine we could learn the two main types internal combustion engines and external combustion engines in case of internal combustion engines the phenomenon of combustion happens inside the engine cylinder whereas in external combustion engine the phenomenon of combustion takes place outside the engine cylinder the best examples for internal combustion engines can be petrol engine diesel engine but when you take up the example of external combustion engine since the combustion happens outside the engine cylinder the best one is steam engine next we could learn the classification of ic engines on knowing the broad classification of ic engines i could tell the historical essence of engines directly going to the comprehension of classification of engine it will not serve any purpose it may not be helpful in the examination point of view or examination perspective in any topic at least for about 5 minutes the historical perspective has to be clearly emphasized some of the pioneers or engineers responsible for the significant growth of engines or engine technology can be named from sir james watt nicholas augustus cagnot john barber john stevens samuel brown nicholas augustus auto rudolph diesel dugald clark jean joseph ethan lenayer and many more these were the names of the pioneers or engineers what we need to bear in mind on knowing this i could clearly discuss the classification of internal combustion engines we could come across a variety of internal combustion engines later we could discuss the parts festooned in an engine before knowing the exact mechanism of say four stroke diesel engine petrol engine two stroke engines we should be well accustomed with the parts in an engine on seeing to the schematic we could get the idea about the parts in an engine followed by functional features next we could learn the terminology in an ic engine we could uh, name two engine specifications one is the engine bore or the diameter the second one is the stroke the stroke of piston or length of piston or where a colloquially piston displacement is very important on knowing the term cylinder bore and stroke we could even discuss the names or the terms top dead center and bottom dead center so friends in the first video lecture 
these are all the salient points or the salient aspects what one has to be clearly be aware of in the coming videos let me go to the depth wherein each and every one will be in a position to know the insight required in understanding internal combustion engines thank you very much on listening to my video lecture thank you